Read your Bible. Hold on. I'll come here. Read your Bible. It says, women, be careful the way you treat your husbands. Let you offend the angel. You ever found that before? <laughs> That's not huge now. I'm going to show you that. No, go and find out. It's there. Don't even bother yourself. It's there. It's there. It's there. And then it says now, because the man is the head of the woman. It means the angel sends to minister to the woman as a wife watches her attitude toward her husband. This is where most women have missed the covering of their husbands. Be warned. Be warned. It's a serious matter. And then for the men, yeah, this now you say the, the men are over, the men are also out of it. No, no, not at all. At all. Christ watches how you treat your wife. It's not Christ. Even your own angel. Finally, you see there. It says, let the men treat their wives tenderly. Lest their prayers be hindered. You see that? For this cause, all the woman to have power on her head because of... Explain. 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 You find some couples, they, they look as if they are well, but the women can disrespect. The women can talk. Every time you open your mouth disrespecting your husband, you are disrespecting the grace of Christ. It's true. That's what you're doing. And so you find that, that's why I advise most women, don't carry offense towards your husband. Don't. Don't. He hurts you, please find a place quickly. Honey, you've hurt me. Please, it's not good. Ba 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 ba. Clear the thing out. Save yourself from angelic interruptions. This is why most women in their marriages are in trouble. They are struggling. The grace of the husband is not being a blessing to them. Please be warned. I advise you all. Then for the men, give me the scripture also. He says, be careful how you treat them. Lest your own prayers also be not hindered. He says, uh, never, not, not, nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Just type in that. You'll find the scripture. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. You see where some men, God may hear them. That your prayers be not hindered. I hate to have a problem with my wife. I fear this scripture. Not be here, I fear. Oh. Not be here, I fear. I fear the scripture. If I want my heavens to be closed, Oh, those are causing problem. Seriously. You see, when people become godly, their lives are really blessed. It will be different. You wonder why a man, no matter his anger, no matter what's happening, he just stays in the order of God's word. And he stays blessed. But an ungodly man, to go and find wife number two. <laughs> so don't take phone and call the colleague in the office and start doing foolish chats. Yeah. I'm not happy with me today. So what's happened to you now? Boss. They call you boss. Say, my wife, my wife, my wife. Where? You want to hang out small? <laughs> it's that thing, so I need to relax my mind. Say, where are you? I'm here, yeah, yeah. Okay, come. Okay, come. Carry a car key. Say, honey, where are you going to? I'm coming. Say, go. That dishonor. That dishonor. That dishonor. Heaven close. Let me advise you all. Hear me well. Husbands, whenever you notice your wife is struggling with a certain aspect of grace, her health, or anything, put her down. Help her to honor you. Put her down and help her to honor you. And ask, did I offend you? Something wrong? Everything. That's it. Now, women, whenever you notice frustration in the life of your husband, frustration, restlessness, doors are shutting, things are slow. Ask him, put it down. Tony, is there any way you are dishonoring me or I have made you to be doing some funny things that are not nice? If he's true, a real man will tell you the truth. And when that happens, reconcile things. When he starts treating you dishonorably, his heaven is shutting. 
So because you fear what will happen to the family, start finding out and being gentle to what you can solve the issue. Because if the man's heaven close, has don't close. Has don't, even if you're inside, you suffer. You suffer. It's both ways. If the woman oh, is woman's in trouble, what happened? Are you every day for hospital now? Are you the one every day will begin to have issues in the house? Things will be done in a funny way. The kids will suffer because the grace has been limited on how to even minister to the children. So you will also suffer. So any way, any of you will suffer. So to avoid that, I've shown you scriptures eh? I'm not talking from space. If you have a better interpretation, believe it. If your own is better or it's more true than my own, please feel free now. But this is my own that I know, eh? And it's helping me. So your own that you should know, let it help you. That's all. So go back to that blessing, that verse, that blessing there. That um, peace, son of peace. Son of peace. It's the same thing. That's why, hear me, hear me on this, eh? There are true things. There are times when I've had pain in my body. I call for mommy. Mommy, not lie at all. I say, come and lay your hands here and pray for me. I tell you guys before God, I've seen many times my healing takes place immediately. She's here to testify. Many times. I partner with the grace given to me. Two are better than one. At least away from just being husband and wife, you're also a child of God. So there is grace on you in that aspect. Are you see what I'm saying? So the partnership is fortified double as husband and wife and as brethren. It's a tremendous force. How does Satan destroy that force? Conflicts. That's all. When you spot conflict in your marriage, just know that you're under attack. You are under a severe attack. And stop thinking that it's your spouse that is the enemy. It's the crisis that's the enemy. It's that lack of fellowship. You breach the gap quickly. Am I making sense? Those of you who are not yet married yet, please learn it before you go in. Learn it. Don't say that you're for those who are married yet. Tomorrow will be you. Learn it. And that's what you are, you are learning. You start thinking about the kind of man you marry, a man that knows God. It will be easy for you. Don't be having prayer topics every day. Learn it. And for the men, marry a woman that can easily honor you with respect. Simple. That there will not be some difficulty for you to make her understand because she's so independent in her way of thinking. Be careful. Marry the kind of woman that you can talk once she hears. It's important. It will save you a lot. You are the leader, by the way. You are the head. And when head has always hear from the body. <laughs> uh, like driving a car from behind. <laughs> it's not to make the body of the car unnecessary. Eh? What is the purpose of a boss with no tears? <laughs> no. And what's the purpose now of the chairs with no staring? No, no cabin. No, no. Eh? We just want to want to like that. So the two are necessary if everyone takes his or her place. Tell me what's happening with the passengers and the chairs. Don't tell me what's happening with the staring. Okay. But well, if you are dead behind, there's a match loss, match break, match loss, match break. <laughs> <laughs> ten, ten left, ten, ten, ten. And the man is just sitting on the stairs. Uh, uh, left. <laughs> a much loss. Break. One day, since she is not seeing the screen clearly, they will enter hole. Or if she has left the back and sat with you in the front, then the goods at the back will be in disorder. There will be no order in that bus. Look what I'm saying right now, everybody here. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, learn these things. It saves, it saves from a lot of issues. I don't know what kind of life you guys want to live without the Word of God. Am I talking some novel here with you? Am I talking history book? Am I talking chemistry and biology? As good as they are, but hey, the Word gives life. The Word is a light, it's a lamb. It guides our understanding according to the author of life. You can't fail with God's Word. All of our failures are because of independence. The way we think is my idea, is my family idea, that's what I do in my family. Nah, no, I've never been used to this thing. That's not what we you are used to. You are, you are who? The person is a reference. Your experience is your reference. How bad can your experience be? I'm mommy, we're married for six years now. And from the beginning, I said, 
this marriage experience no get use. Tradition no get use. Seriously, personal ideology no get use. If you argue anything, bring the word. And when the word shows up, we all submit. That's the conclusion of our marriage. That's the conclusion. When the word shows up, we all submit to it. But that, my, the way they brought me up, who brought you up? Do you know Jesus? Who brought you up? <laughs> who brought you up? The way we used to do it before, the way I've been doing it, the way my father, my mother, they are uncles of Christ. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. You see, and this is important, you see. So, keep your heart safe because no matter where you are, listen, no matter where you are, if I stand here, I'm about to speak to you. So where you sit, listen as though I know your name and I'm actually addressing your case. Is that clear? Because in all I've said here, it means everything to everyone here. Everybody. Somebody contemplating marriage, somebody who has been disrespectful, somebody who has been harboring grief, bitterness in the heart, somebody whose marriage is going through a difficult time, somebody about to get married and is already contemplating a wrong partner. And God is wanting you to watch this out very carefully now. Somebody that God is giving an expectation what to look up to, how to behave. You have the advantage. A prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. Who's getting me right now here? And these are the kind of teachings that have changed your life over the years. Like I've told you guys many times, there are three kinds of people in life. Those that create problems, those that solve them, those that avoid them. And I've told you, people mostly take those that avoid them very lightly because they never met the problem and faced the pain before the help came. So they just feel like it's normal. Please be careful. The person helping you to avoid problems is your most precious person in life. Most precious, most precious.